Hello and welcome to issue number 15 for April 10th, 2013. This is the Comic Station. I am Paul Nisi. And I'm Scott Gates of the Comic Station. As usual, we try to bring you the latest news of some issues that are either new or may have been missed before. We're not trying to uh, rehash series that are long-standing and most people, if they're interested, probably know about it. We're trying to bring things out that you may have missed. Of course, we also bring you a review and a recommendation as well, just to sweeten the pot. Alright, for the new releases for this week, we're going to start off with a quote-unquote big one. Uh, this is Invincible Universe, number one. Uh, this follows the events of Invincible, which is a long-running series by Image Comics, um, issue number 100. Uh, there, in issue number 100, there was a giant catastrophe, uh, the whole world is in trouble. Superheroes, in this one, you're seeing what all the superheroes are doing, the different teams. Uh, they're all run by one organization, and the director is going through getting his reports of what's happening. All the heroes are out doing different things. And back in the base, young Thor has been brought back, and it's an in interesting little thing, but the real cream of the crop comes at the end when an old enemy comes for help. Uh, it opens up a new interesting uh, avenue for what's going to happen next and I really dig the art style I uh, admittedly I need to get more into Invincible but it's always been one that I've always wanted to try to get into more so I don't want want to recommend Invincible Universe it's probably not the best jumping off point it does rely a lot especially on this first issue a lot on previous knowledge and it's going to be, Invincible itself has a huge following. It will be difficult to get back issues of it, but you can get it all in trades. Um, or if you do actually have to have a number one, you can contact us here at the comic station because we do in fact have Invincible number one uh, mm -hmm. for sale. But it is, it is easily uh, accessible through trades. Okay. Uh, the next one is actually a number zero by Dark Horse. This is simply X. Uh, Kind of summing it up real quick, it's a dark, gritty, violent, vigilante justice. Uh, the main character, X, kills uh, mostly gang members, especially in this issue, and there's no real reason, quote-unquote, given. You don't know was his family killed, anything like that. You just know that he's killing them because he believes that they deserve it, which is probably a good reason because they are bad people. Um, <laughs> But he does it brutally. He doesn't just kill, he maims, he kills, he uses them as a statement. And really beautiful artwork. Like I said, it's a little dark, it's go very, go very gory. Uh, but I really liked it, very fast paced. And I'm interested to see what will happen because he's not a normal hero. He's a normal human doing superhero things. So he does get banged up a lot. And I'm looking forward to reading it. I have not read it yet, um, but I, it, it's got my interest peaked. Yeah, uh, Eric Nugent is the artist here, and I gotta give him some credit here because it was really beautiful. The next one, not for majority of people that are gonna be watching this or reading this, but I like to give a little shout out to uh, Little Golf Gotham, Little Gotham by DC, mainly because it's nice to see one of the big players introduce a young reader's comic. It's not in all ages. This is definitely for the younger readers if you're in if your kids or yourself are in your teens you probably have outgrown this already um, artwork is very cartoonish it's basically two short stories both of them very simplistic they have morals it's kinda of funny but again very simplistic very uh, very young readers it's not young adult and it's it's nice to see them bring out Batman. 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 Kids coming into our store are always looking, little kids especially, are looking for stuff to read. They don't make a tremendous amount of stuff. They do. DC does a better job, I think, than Marvel does for the younger readers. They have the Superman Family Adventures and now Batman. Um, and what kid doesn't like Batman? We can't let them read the adults' t titles. This is perfect. Yes. Um, it's just nice to see younger adult. It actually reminds me of a web series comic that I follow. It's called JL8.com. Uh, it is about the Justice League when they're little kids in the kindergarten, and it's really cute. I recommend you check it out. JL8. 
it's on Tumblr. The next one is from IDW. This is a interesting would not be the right word for it. Uh, just not enough. But it, you can get it from the title. It's called The Colonized Zombies vs. Aliens. That sums it up. Uh, <laughs> aliens come down, they make first contact, but what do they do? They go over a graveyard and they pull up a zombie. That's where it starts out. Don't worry though, it's not all zombies, it's not just aliens. Humans are alive, uh, there is a human set settlement nearby. They aren't necessarily, they're not in a zombie apocalypse. They, they aren't really aware of it until near the end, but there's a lot of it's really evident that a lot of the human conflict, at least, is going to be societal. It's, there's a lot of infighting within the group, power struggles. Uh, the aliens think that they're messengers, and so it's interesting. And, of course, there's always zombies. So, it isn't like that. Um, so, it's, a, it's a neat, it's a little uh, off the books, it's a little, little different. And the artwork is very nice. The uh, storyline is a little hokey, kind of like 70 horrors flick, just a little bit reminds me of that, uh, but with a really nice crisp art style and really well written dialogue and uh, story introduction. But again, it's just, it's just going off an interesting concept. Yeah, not generally something that I would read. I will check it out because it is, it's new and... I would give everything. IDW, for me, can go either way. Either they write some really great Bitterness. stuff or stuff that I just can't stomach. Yep. Um, the last two aren't necessarily... They're not new. They're not uh, really changing anything. But, of course, I want to highlight Star Wars number four. If you've seen the previous issues of Comic Station, you know we love this series. And again, it's still great. This one, you get more Han, more Chewie, more Luke. Luke is grounded. Uh, Leia kind of leaves him behind from on a mission. And, of course, Vader gets more of a show, which is nice because we kind of missed him the last few issues. And, of course, he's grumpy. <laughs> so, again, really good. If you're a Star Wars fan, check it out. Yeah, absolutely. I have nothing much to add to that. It's a great book. If you, if you haven't seen it yet, go check out some of our earlier ish, issues of Comic Station. Love it. Ranted. I'm not going to bore you with more information on that. The last one we have is Saga number 12. Now, this one is not anything in particular. Honestly, I need to catch up on this series. I am only done the first volume, which is up to issue 8. I need to catch up. But there's an interesting piece of news out there we wanted to bring. It is that... Uh, Apple, for their uh, iBooks, iTunes uh, catalog, has decided to ban issue number 12. There is a little note on Image's website, and I'll be cutting that in around here and letting you see that, but go to Image, check that out if you're really interested. Um, basically, Apple's decided to ban it because there are two thumbnail-sized pictures of gay sex. Um, if you're anywhere familiar with Saga, it's kind of par for course for this series. I don't... Uh, so it's a little interesting why they decided to ban this issue and not some of the other more salacious full-page images. But just thought you um, people in the comic universe might be interested in knowing this information. We're not going to say anything about it as far as uh, our opinions or what we believe is right, but just wanted people to know. Uh, if you are one of the people that gets it on iTunes or through Apple, Image wants to let you know you can obviously go to image.com, check that out. They also, in their notice, recommend going to a local shop, picking it up. And there are other avenues to get it. Alright, uh, next we have our review and recommendation. Today for our reviews, we have a intersection of the gaming world and comic world again, uh, this time. It is The Last of Us American Dreams number one. This is brought to us by Dark Horse Comics, uh, the artist and lead writer Faith Aaron Hicks, and the assistant writer is actually Neil Druckmann, who is the creative director of The Last of Us, the video game from Sony PlayStation that is coming out later this year. 
So for this comic book in particular, it centers around Ellie. The artwork usually is not my style, but Faith Hicks does a great job of showing emotions and showing the way that Ellie actually reacts to the world. Uh, in the review that you can find on frontdoorsgamer.com, you'll see that there's a particular part where I say just that, where it's not my usual style, but it really does add to the story. It adds depth to the story that would not have been there uh, by words alone. And I really, really enjoyed this. I thought it added a lot of character development, for, not development, but character introduction for Ellie, which, if you know about The Last of Us, She's the young girl that's going through the world and trying to get, for whatever reason, from one of the last human civilizations to somewhere else. Uh, in this, there actually are a few little tidbits and hidden things, some things you maybe pay attention to on the wall, little things not so hidden, it's a little more obvious as far as giving you little hints about what will be coming up in the game. Uh, for the comic itself, it's a four issue run. It will be coming out, the last issue will be coming out uh, a few weeks after the game itself. But it's really set up to be its own story. Uh, you can read the comic and not play the game, you can play the game and not read the comic. But if you do both, you'll get a little bit more about the world itself. The wor in my review, I, s I actually, in the end, I say that the comic book. The Last of Us American Dreams, it really does flesh out the characters, and the world is one of those characters. And though usually the scenes are centered around Ellie going from one vignette to another, there is hardly ever a wasted page, there's hardly ever a wasted uh, slide section of the book, and everything if you're not learning more about Ellie, you're learning more about the people in the world, and how they're justification or they're dealing with the world. Um, there is a lot of uh, really nice depth to explore. Uh, American Dreams, it should be a good read for anybody whether you're a fan of the game or not. So uh, I did give it a score on FrontTowardsGamer.com. I gave it an 8. It's actually really great. It's a great comic on its own. I think it adds more, but not everyone's going to read and want more for the video game and everything. So, as a comic itself, as a standalone, I thought it was great. Okay. And for me, we're going to recommend this week, um, it's, a, it's a major title from a major publisher, it's Marvel, and it's, it's Avengers Arena. What I like about this is, a lot, it, it doesn't get the same publicity and the same press that all the other Avenger type titles do. Um, I was very skeptical when this came out. I figured, oh boy, it's you know, a bunch of bunch of Avengers kids on an island, uh, you know, battle royale game to the death. But it has really surprised me, and it, it, I've stuck with it now. This is issue number seven, um, and I, I've actually really enjoyed it as opposed to uh, you know some of the other major titles. Um, I just think it, it, it it's giving you some in depth into some minor characters that you know obviously are this is they're on an island called murder world so chances are not many of them if any will ever escape um so you, you know but you do get some of these minor characters they are kids um and it, it's it's just a it's an interesting twist on things and it's a little bit different than the normal avengers superhero stuff that we get to read so give it a shot um i like it and it's kept me entertained now for seven issues it's the marvel hunger games basically exactly yep so I, I like the Hunger Games as far as the books at least go. So, all right. Uh, finally, we want to end with a uh, special notes. We did an interview with Tom Merritt and Len Peralta. Uh, Tom Merritt is a well-known, mostly tech uh, reviewer, podcaster, and Len Peralta is be probably best known for his Geek a Week uh, Kickstarters that he ran where he does 52 cards of people that are in uh, geek or nerd uh industries. Um, of course there's Bill Gates and a lot of video game producers so in this one they're actually doing their own comic it's called Ten State it's on Kickstarter unfortunately it is ending actually by the time this airs it'll be ending on April 10th Wednesday uh, but later in the afternoon so maybe if you re get this early enough you can go check it out otherwise go check it out just look at it 
Um, they have met their goal. They're, they are going to do the first three issues, so hopefully something comes of it a little further and it comes out to the general public a little more. But, again, we have an interview with them. We did a video interview, and you can find that on FrontTowardsGamer.com or on YouTube, Comic Station, and so forth. All right, thank you. This has been Comic Station issue number 15 for April 10, 2013. And, again, we will see you next week with the new releases, things you may have missed, as well as a review and recommendation. As always, feel free to leave any comments. Let us know if we're missing anything. If you want us to add anything, maybe... Uh, Go, step away from the games more and we'll go into the games more. So let us know. Any comments, as long as they're constructive, is appreciated. Thank you. See ya.